rounds fired, three lives lost, a gun in the wrong hand, oh what a cost, the whole town gathers as questions fly, why God allowed three children to die, then no Mr. Carter stepped forward and said, seems you've forgotten just what you Church. I'm Mike Noggle, the pastor here, and I'm so glad that you are all here uh, today. Uh, thank you for all of those of you who are joining us online. Hope that the time that you spent with us is uh, is valuable to you, and we know that you have many choices you can make, uh, and you chose us, so we, we are grateful for that. Um, we're obviously coming here this morning under circumstances that we really didn't want to imagine. Um, but during the course of the uh, worship service, I hope that you will uh, find that uh, we'll be able to maybe alleviate the pain just a little bit uh, and then replace it with the hope and assurance of uh, the resurrection and eternal life that Jesus Christ has to offer. Uh, so um, with that, I just have a few announcements to begin worship this morning, uh, beginning at uh, six o'clock uh, this evening. Over at Zion uh, is the um, Lenten Bible study or Bible uh, Lenten Sunday evening services. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. That Zion is the one on State Route 12, right across from Liberty Benton School. Um, Pastor um, uh, Pastor Greg Fox will be the speaker uh, this evening. He's a pastor at Trinity and also at New Hope over in uh, Rawson. Uh, so please come for that. Um, this is our next to last one. The next one will be next Sunday night. This Thursday evening at 7 o'clock is our last uh, meeting of our uh, Lenten Bible study at the Bethel Family Life Center. That starts at 7 o'clock on Thursday the 7th. Uh, so please come for that. Donating uh, to their drive. We collected here 52 jars, which far exceeded what we did last year, and I'm very grateful. Now, Pleasant View had a little bit a different track because since it's their 150th year, they challenged themselves to raise 150, and they did. So between our two churches, we delivered on Tuesday 208 jars of peanut butter. So hopefully there's going to be a lot of uh, full stomachs uh, with, with that, and we, we are so grateful that you have been so generous. Um, couple other things moving forward. Uh, we have uh, our birthday and anniversary collection today, uh, so we'll be moving on that in just a moment. Um, 
And I'm trying to do this by memory because um, I left the other sheet in my folder over at the other church, so I'm trying to do that. But inside your, um, inside your bulletin, you'll see the, um, Palm, uh, the Holy Week schedule, next Sunday being Palm Sunday already. Uh, so we'll have a celebration here at normal worship time. And then next Sunday evening, the district superintendent will be the speaker for our Sunday evening Lenten service. We'll be getting you more information about a lot of these things here in the next few days because the funeral I had on Wednesday and then the circumstances of the last 72 hours, uh, we didn't get the newsletter out as we had planned. We had wanted to every single day and things just got in the way that were seemingly uh, required more attention. So we'll try and get that out. We're hopefully, uh, hopefully have that in your hand by the end of the day on Tuesday. If you have any other information that you want to get to me, change of address, email, uh, phone number, uh, want to speak to me for some reason, uh, put, put it on this uh, yellow welcome card and stick it in the, uh, in the offering basket back there. Are there any other announcements uh, before we begin service this morning? Today? Okay. There'll be a short trustees meeting after service right here in the sanctuary. Uh, Dwayne? Yeah, I have one. Uh, when you came in this morning, uh, Regina probably handed you an envelope that said Easter offering on it. This is what we have done in the past is our way of raising money for the Ernst Mission project. So uh, we had the envelopes today and next Sunday, and if you would, please bring them back on Easter Sunday. And as I say, these are a way that we, or this is a way that we have in the past raised money for the Ernst Mission funding. So please, uh, uh, please make use of this. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Dwayne. Yes, uh, for those of you who know, we support Darius and Spendi Ernst down in Mexico. Uh, Darius is the grandson of Ada Rao, who attends over at, uh, at um, uh, Pleasant View. Uh, for those who are watching online, um, I've made some reference here about some things that have happened here in our community the last 72 hours. If you're not aware of them, I will be sharing more of that here in a little bit in the service. So uh, bear with me and you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll find out what's going on here among us. Uh, any other announcements before we begin service this morning? Okay, uh, Nancy, will you prepare hearts and minds for worship? Oh, yes, the birthdays. How many have birthdays or anniversaries in April? Raise your hands. Oh, well, we got a couple anyway. All right, we have the box up here. As you know, that goes. The collection goes to the uh, Christian Education Fund, uh, County uh, Religious Education Fund, I should say. Uh, so if uh, if you'll uh, play our song and we'll sing sing it in. Come on up, Jeff. You can you can you can put it up. To, you can put it up there when uh, Nancy's playing. Uh, you prepare hearts and minds for worship.
Thank you. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Let us pray. Father God, your people have gathered here in your house this morning in the very shadow of the Francis family home under circumstances that none of us ever wanted to imagine. Some have come looking for answers, looking for some word that helps us understand why bad things happen to good people. Others have come in deep pain and sorrow looking for some sense of comfort. And then there are those who have come looking for ways that we can be your hands and feet in this dark night to those who are in such deep pain over this tragic loss. Loving God, please let us all experience this morning the warm embrace of your Holy Spirit holding us tight, assuring us of your presence, and letting us know that everything is going to be all right. So as we come together in grief and acknowledge our human loss, we offer praise to you, Father. Praise for your victory and ask you to grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Amen. Will you please join us in our opening hymn, which can be found on page 365 or on the screen, Grace Greater Than All Our Sin, and if you are able, please rise.
continue in our praise in singing Sanctuary. We'll sing it through twice. The words are on the screen. Thank you, you may be seated. We've now come to that time in our service that we take our joys and concerns to the Lord. And we've had a heavy week. As all of you here in the sanctuary most likely know, and as probably many of you online know as well, on Thursday morning, early Thursday morning, we lost Officer Dominic Francis, who was killed in the line of duty. He was a Bluffton police officer. And for us here in Mount Corey, a neighbor across our parking lot, and for those who are involved in the Corey Rosson School, the Corey Rosson School District, um, he was a substitute teacher, a bus driver, um, coach, many, many other things, and volunteer fire department here as well. It's almost easier to list the things he didn't do than the things he did. But it's a day that none of us want to think about. Uh, we lift up not only Dominic, but also his wife, Nikki, Blake and Taylor, their children, uh, mom, and dad, Bob and Vicki. And also, we want to lift up Merle and Ann Francis. Many of you know them because they started attending church here last summer and were regular attenders and then have been wintering in Florida. Um, and um, I was able to talk to them by phone on Thursday afternoon. Um, and they are on their way back. They were packing and getting ready to come back. So um, please remember that family in your prayers. And as a result, you hate that something like this has to happen uh, before we, um, we remember to do it. But all of our law enforcement, our first responders, our fire department, we need to keep them in our prayers. You know, these are the people that run toward danger when we're all running away. And they all expect to go home from their shift at work, and for most of them, they do. But they don't know that for sure, and this reminds us of that. So we need to pray for all of them as well. We also want to lift up Will Davis. He's battling stomach cancer, he's now home uh, but is uh, struggling with eating and, and keeping up his strength uh, and, um, uh, because he is in pain. Uh, so we do uh, want to lift up Will and obviously Phyllis as uh, she uh, tends to him. I also just want to mention, I forgot to mention it earlier, uh, I see Bob is here and so glad to see you back. Of course, uh, Bob's stepdaughter, uh, Gina, passed away recently up in Wisconsin. And while they had services up there, there are going to be services here in this area, too, for those who wish to attend over at Hanson Neely uh, Funeral Home in uh, Ada. 
So you can check on their website or check with them as far as times. But it's my understanding of visitations on Friday and funeral on Saturday. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, please continue to be in prayer for, for that family as well. Um, I also got a call from Jana Simons. She has, she's battling a very bad cold still and um, hopes to be back next there, there's somebody that, oh, um, Nordy Ryder uh, wishes uh, prayers as well. Uh, with she's, She had cataract surgery last week, but her eye isn't clearing up the way that she has hoped and, and the doctors hope. So she has another appointment this week. Uh, so let me lift up her up in prayer as well. Are there others? Yes. Um, I ask that you would pray for the Cascaden family. Um, Jill's mom was placed on hospice yesterday. Uh, the girls go out here to Quarry Rawson, and they're, they're in the community and with a lot of our kids. What was the last name? Cascaden. Okay. Any others? I've got a couple of joys. Good. <laughs> we need some joys. <laughs> Well, Thursday I went to the doctor, and everything is healing up really great, and now I'll be going to the cancer center, but as far as they th are presuming right from right now, I won't even have to have any chemo or anything. Uh, that is a joy. So we'll know more in a couple months. And yesterday we had a... T the soccer game out here at the school and we played Ada and at the end of the game the coaches the team got together and prayed for Dominic and his family so I think that was a very nice idea for them yeah it was a beautiful thing to see uh, any others If not, will you please uh, continue in worship with us and sing our praise hymn this morning. It's found on page 301 or on the screen, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Uh, and you may remain seated uh, while singing this song.
Dear loving Heavenly Father, we've come into your house this morning, so grateful to be here, coming to find comfort, coming to find respite, coming to find your hand upon us. We know that when we come to you with our joys and things that are going on in our lives that bring us happiness that you have blessed us with, we, are, we know that you are smiling and joyous with us and we know that when we come to you with our pain and our sorrow, our fear and anxiety, you are right there with us as well and we thank you for that. Lord, we come at a very hard time, maybe a time unlike any seen in this community and it's 150 years. But Lord, we just ask for your blessing on Officer Dominic Francis. We pray that you are holding him in your ever-loving arms this morning. But it's still hard for those left behind, all those who are grieving his loss, both his blood family and his blue family, his colleagues on the police force and all others in his environment. He's touched so many people. So we ask a special prayer for Ricky and for Taylor and Blake, for Bob and Vicki, for Merle and Ann, and particularly a prayer for safe travel as Merle and Ann makes that long, arduous journey up from Florida. And it reminds us to be in prayer for our law enforcement, our fire department, our first responders and all those in service to their community and their neighbors, that you keep them safe, that you put a hedge of protection around them. It's so hard when we experience things like this, but help us all look for ways to be in support and be light in the darkness as the blue lights and blue ribbons fill this community and the beautiful prayer vigil on Friday and the over 200 vehicles in the memorial cruise last evening. We just ask that it give the family some level of comfort. Lord, we also lift up those who are battling with physical illness. We thank you for the healing that you brought in the life of Mary Ann. But we know that we need to pray for Will and his cancer. Be with Phyllis as she tends to him and tries to encourage him and Strengthen him. Help him to be free of the pain that will allow him to want to eat again and build up his strength. Be with Nordy as she continues to deal with her eyes and not recovering quite as quickly as she had hoped. Just ask for full healing for her. Continue to be with Bob Couples and his family as they mourn Gina's loss and be with them and strengthen them in the days ahead. We thank you for the people in our bulletin that we pray for. We lift them up to you. We know that you are in control. We know that you are a God who answers prayers and who hears us. And you know these situations better than we do, so we put our trust and faith in you. And we ask your intervention in that, those situations and also, once again, in the situation in Ukraine. Let your will be done. And I'm certain that there are unspoken requests on the hearts of those who are watching online or those who are here in our congregation, we're going to take a moment to lift them up to you now.
Lord, you bless us each and every day in ways that we don't, can't even begin to think to thank you for, and we're sorry for that, but we are so grateful. Lord, you blessed us in a way that we can give back to others, whether it's through peanut butter jars or through the offering for the Hancock Christian Reg Education or through our general offering today. And just ask you to bless each gift and each giver. Multiply it and use it in furtherance of your kingdom and make us good stewards of the funds that you provide to us. And most especially today and in the weeks ahead, we give you thanks for the gift of your son, Jesus, who because of his death and resurrection at a time when we were yet sinners, you provided a way for us to have hope in these dark times and assurance of our eternity with you in heaven. And it is in the name of that Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If the kids want to come forward. Got a small and mighty group. There we go. I have a seat. I'll talk just for a second. I brought something with me today. And no, it's not a lamb, and it's not a dog or a cat. Might be pretty good, though. What do I have there? For those that can't see back there, what, what's, what's this that I'm holding here? Fruit. A bowl of fruit. I got apple and an orange and grapes and banana. A couple of those we can grow around here. The other couple we have to have shipped in from other places. Now, when we get them at the store and they look like this and... They're all ready to eat, right? Do they just happen all of a sudden to look like this? No, what, what happens? They start out very small and have to grow? Are they all plants? So what do plants need to be able to grow? Now, water is very good. It needs water. Sunlight is very good. And they need soil because that's where the minerals are to help the plants grow. So they need those things. And over time, as they experience the, the water and the sun and the soil and the nutrients, they're able to grow into wonderful fruit that we can then share and eat. Well, this morning in Scripture, we're going to be talking about spiritual fruit. Now, what is that? Well, Paul actually tells us what that is. Spiritual fruit... And there are a number of them. It's love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All those things. So if we have spirit, that's what they're talking about. Those things. We have love in our hearts. We have joy in our hearts. We have peace in our hearts. We're kind to people. We're able to control our impulses. We're faithful to God and those kind of things. So do you think that once we decide we want to accept Jesus as our Savior, that we instantly are good at all these things? Uh -oh. Being good at all of these things. And you look out here and, and look at myself, and we're still trying to do better at a lot of these things. But, you know, it doesn't happen overnight either. Just as these fruit don't grow overnight, it takes time. And there are three things, just as plants need water and soil and rain and, and sunshine, we need things. We need prayer. We need teaching of leaders here in the church or down in your Sunday school or in your home. And we need to read the Bible. It's God's word. And the more time we spend in prayer, more time we spend in the Bible, more time we learn here at church, 
then we'll be able to develop those fruits of the Spirit as well. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to share with these young people your future, our future. And we just ask that the Holy Spirit fill them and help them keep this message alive in their hearts that the more time they spend with you, the more they will develop joy and peace and love and kindness and the others. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Good morning. morning. And kids, what you just listened to for the children's lesson, listen to this because this is where it says it in the Bible. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with the passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Thank you, Shar, and may God bless the reading of his holy word this morning. Well, it happens on TV sets and movie sets all the time. They're trying to put the production together. They're trying to get it on film, and things just aren't working right. The dialogue just isn't right. It doesn't make sense in that particular moment. And at that time, they call in the writers, we need to rewrite. We need to rewrite. Well, our calendar says this is the fifth of six Sundays in our study of Galatians, the Gospel of Grace. And we're going to conclude next Sunday on Palm Sunday with grace that sustains. We can't extend this another week because of Easter. But to just preach on our scripture passage without addressing the horrible tragedy experienced by our community a little over 72 hours ago just won't work. It misses the mark. It's tone deaf. So since then... Among many phone calls, home visits, prayer vigil Friday night, the remarkable memorial cruise last evening that came up all the way through downtown Bluffton and up the road up here to 235 and through Main Street past our church and in front of the Dominic Francis family home next door to be a blessing to them. The call went out. We need a rewrite. So therefore, I ask your grace and your patience this morning as I try to put into the words the message not only from Galatians, but what God wants us to receive here this morning. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. 
Amen. You know, we are counting down the Sundays of Lent and looking ahead to Easter. As we work our way through the Galatians Gospel of Grace, and as you know and as we've talked about many times here in the last month, graces of the unmerited loving action of God in our lives. And we've seen how God grace transforms. It transforms us and that with grace we can embrace our differences and expand our possibilities of ministry. That grace clothes us and covering our divisions and grace forms us into the likeness of Christ. So we are now free. Today, as we listen to the words of Paul from the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Grace, we come to understand that grace frees us. It frees us from the burden of the works of the law, from the bondage of sin and its consequences of death. And grace frees us to take the next step, which is to bear fruit, to bear fruit of the Spirit. Grace frees us to live by the Spirit, loving one another and bearing the fruit of love in all aspects of our lives. The first verse of this chapter, the chapter 5 of Galatians, says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. What are they talking about slavery? Well, as we have mentioned In that time, the church was being told in Galatia that they needed something more than just accepting Christ as their Lord and Savior because of what he did on the cross. They also had to follow this religious dogma and these rules and regulations, these man-made restrictions that uh, were added on. When the truth is we're saved by Christ's actions and his actions alone and not based upon any submission to human rules. The Daily Bread this morning was titled, God's Great Love. And you know, sometimes when we accept Christ, we struggle with past sins, even after having come to Christ. And despite confessing and repenting for these past sins over and over again, Guilt and shame threaten to consume us, consume the joy that Christ wants us to have until we come to understand that it was by his free gift of grace that God's great love abolished the lies that chained us to who we were before we confessed our sins. By his grace, we can all finally receive the forgiveness of God that's been offered to us all of our lives. It's been available to us all of our lives. It's been available to us when we were five. It's been available to us when we're 20. It's been available to us when we're 50. It's available to us when we're 90. It's just a question of when we're going to accept it. The third chapter of Lamentations, verses 19 to 26, says this, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall, and I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him, the one who seeks him, and it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. That hope is available to all of us. This chapter is critical in Paul's message to the Galatians because it reaches back to what has been set up to this point and pushes forward to the inescapable implications of what the gospel accomplishes for us and in us because it is freedom won by Christ and made available to those of us who trust him that is the reward. 
In verse 13, it says, we're called to freedom. So then comes the qualifications of what Christian freedom is and is not. And Christian freedom is not freedom to self-indulge or take advantage of our neighbor. Galatians 16 to 26, which Shar read, clarify what our liberty is meant to be and how it is to be lived out. It's interesting, perhaps even surprising, that the law is not thrown aside, in fact, is fulfilled by Christ. The attitudes, actions, and expressions of Christian love. And that's how it is done. No wonder we're urged to walk in the Spirit in verse 16, and then again in 26, walk in the Spirit. The life in the Spirit gives freedom and empowerment to love the way God intends to love each other. It says the works of the flesh, and it lists them out. And be careful before you uh, look at any of those in that list and be starting thinking of different people that uh, fall short of any of those because you'll find yourself at some point looking in the mirror because all of us fall short in some fashion. But those works of the flesh can be overcome by fruit of the Spirit. And it is clear that the list is not complete since Paul adds the words, and things like these, as far as the vices, should not be overlooked. The solemn warning, it's added, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And of course, unless they accept Christ and repent. Our freedom is not a license to live any way we please, but freedom by the Spirit to be what God has created us to be and redeemed us to be. Paul says the way to overcome is by giving ourselves to life in the Spirit. This is the way not only to avoiding negative works of the flesh, but the way to positively bear the fruit of the Spirit. Early Thursday morning, word quickly spread that a Bluffton police officer had been killed during the night. And then if that gut punch wasn't bad enough for the community of Bluffton, the next bit of information that came shortly after was that it was Officer Dominic Francis. And suddenly it wasn't just next door in Bluffton, but it struck hard our village of Mount Corey and the entire Corey Rawson School community. As we said, as a coach, a substitute teacher, a bus driver, volunteer fire department, policeman, friend, and neighbor, he touched so many people in so many ways, and so many students and school personnel and friends and neighbors, people even in our own congregation, had just seen and spoken to Dominic in the previous 12 hours. And people tried to get their minds around the news, this can't be happening, not here, not him. And through tears and great grief, words and phrases such as devastating and shocking, senseless, deep, deep sorrow, agony, crushing, and many others were expressed. And those weren't even from the family whose horror for most of us, is just completely unimaginable. So I want to share in the moments ahead some words of hope and encouragement to each of you, dear friends. And if this speaks to you here or any of you online over another loss you've experienced recently or even far in the past, all the better. Some of you may have heard bits and pieces of this before, but it's appropriate that I share it now. When we receive earth-shattering news like the word of Dominic's passing that spread so quickly and shockingly last Thursday, it's hard to get our mind around what is happening and how to even begin to process the news. As Christians, we know that in times of distress and anguish and doubt and confusion, it is important that we look to Jesus to guide our steps 
and rely on the Holy Spirit to help us put one foot in front of the other to keep going. Don't ever forget that we have a God who knows everything that we experience. See, his son was brutally killed as well. He knows your tears and sadness. I want to share with you three moments in the New Testament Gospels in which Jesus has a message for us at times like this. And the first thing that Jesus teaches us is found in the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus had received word from his dear friends Mary and Martha that their brother Lazarus, who Jesus also loved, was ill. And when Jesus left to go to them in Bethany a few days later, the sisters tearfully met him and told him that Lazarus had died. And Jesus was deeply moved. And in verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, which was probably one of the first verses that all of us learned as a child, it says simply, Jesus wept. We know that Jesus was fully divine and that he was also fully human with all the emotions that God has placed in each of us. And he wept. Now understand, Jesus knew that Lazarus was about to be raised from the dead. He knew that. And he knew he was about to be brought back to life. But seeing the anguish and grief in his friends, he felt their sorrow and pain. And he feels the sorrow and pain of all who grieve this loss as well. What I'm trying to tell you and what Jesus has exhibited is it is okay to cry. Great grief, great sorrow, great tears are the price we pay for great love. So let them flow. There's healing in those tears. There's a song currently playing on contemporary Christian radio with the, the words that say, it's okay to cry. You don't have to try to be strong when you're not. It may take some time to make sense of all your thoughts, but don't ever fight your tears because there's freedom in every drop. Sometimes it's the only way to heal a broken heart. The second thing that Jesus shows us on a day is on the day he was, that he died. He had been beaten, tortured, he had been nailed to a cross. And as the hours of his agony drug on, the 27th chapter, verse 46 of the Gospel of Matthew, says that Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Did you catch that? The Son of God, the Savior, who knew the purpose of his death and knew of his resurrection to come, is crying out to God in the middle of his pain. Why? When we're faced with tragedy and sorrow, our humanness wants an explanation. What is the purpose? Why this? Why now? Why at all? If our Lord and Savior can turn to his Father and ask why, I'm here to tell you that God is big enough and has big enough shoulders to hear your uh, cries of why coming out of your pain and anguish. You can cry out to him. We can ask the question of why. Of course, we don't always receive an answer, and at least, at least not on this side of heaven, so how do we cope with that? Well, Jesus was born into a devout Jewish family. He was raised in the faith and in the scriptures, and he was teaching the teachers at age 12 when he was confronted with a challenge or temptation, like when he was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. What did he do? He turned to scripture and quoted scripture to him. So when Jesus was on the cross and asking why, Many believe, as I do, that he was doing the same thing. He was going to the scriptures. Let me read you the first couple of verses from David's 22nd Psalm and see if you recognize these words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? 
Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer and by night and I'm not silent. Now I won't read all 31 verses of the psalm. I encourage you to do that later. But what I want you to know is that while the psalm starts out asking the why question and crying out in pain, by the end of the psalm, it transitions to these words, I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. So shout out your why questions if you need to. It's okay just don't stay there. It is at that point you need to turn the pain over to God and put your trust and faith in him. And he'll be faithful and bring you through this pain. And finally, in the eighth chapter, the Gospel of Luke, which I shared at the prayer vigil on Friday evening and with um, Ann and Merle, his grandparents, and with his parents, Bob and Vicki. We find that the disciples are in the boat in the Sea of Galilee when a sudden storm comes up and threatens to swamp the boat and drown them all. They went to Jesus, who was fast asleep on the boat, and woke him, saying, Master, we're going to drown. The scripture goes on to describe how Jesus rebuked the wind and raging waters and calmed the storm, which caused both fear and amazement among the disciples. From our vantage point today, since we've accepted Jesus to be the son of the living God, it's not so shocking that he had the power to calm a storm. Although if we saw it in person, we might be pretty much in awe. But there's something else here that I don't want you to miss. When the disciples were in the middle of the storm, when they were frightened, when they thought they would not make it to another day, where was Jesus? He wasn't some far off observer. He was right there in the middle, in the middle of the danger, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the fear, uncertainty, and anxiety. And he will be with each of you in the middle of this storm as well. These last few days have been a whirlwind of seeking ways to reach out and show empathy and support and and share grief with each other. There's been little time to be alone with thoughts and feelings. There'll come a time when the world will seemingly go on as it did before. And in those times, it'll be hard to understand how the world can keep going when our world has been so radically changed. It is in those moments of quiet and loneliness that you need to know that you are never truly alone because Jesus is in the boat with you and will never leave you. It is said that sometimes he calms the storm and other times he calms the child. Well, feel his loving arms wrapped around you. He knows your hurt. He knows your pain. He loves you deeply. I'll finish with this. When you were small and a storm was raging outside and you were frightened, it was always comforting to crawl up into a parent's lap or some other loved one and hear them assure you that everything is going to be all right. Well, for the Bluffton community, for Mount Corey, for the Corey Rawson community, it's time to crawl up in the father's lap And hear his words of assurance. I love you. I'm here for you. And everything's going to be all right. Amen. On our church sign out front, John and Jean wanted to put up a tribute to our neighbor and a message to his family. On the second and third lines, it says, rest in peace, Officer Francis, and prayers for the Francis family. And they shared with me their intent to do that, and we discussed a little bit about what the first line should be. And we settled on, greater, man hath, greater love hath no man. 
Many of you, whether you've studied the Bible or not, or maybe even if you're not Christian, can finish that phrase. It comes from the Gospel of John, verse 15. Chapter 15, I mean, verses 12 to 14. I'm sorry I had that marked a moment ago. But chapter 15, verses 12 to 14, says this. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And we decided that was the appropriate thing to put because it expresses exactly what Dominic was living out. He gave his life in the service of his community, looking out for the safety and well-being of his family and his friends. But I want you to remember that that phrase applies to somebody else who did that for us. And it was Jesus. He laid down his life for us. His friends. So that we could have an eternity in heaven. And on the night before he did that, he was in the upper room with his disciples sharing the Seder meal of the Passover. And in the middle of the meal, he took the bread and he held it up and he blessed it and he thanked his father for it and then he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was ended, he took the cup once again held it up, blessed it, and thanked his father for it. He told his disciples, this is my blood shed for you, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As oft as you drink of this cup, remember me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your table. We thank you for these elements, the bread and fruit of the vine that Allow us to remember the great sacrifice that was made for us. Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, help this be the body and blood of Jesus Christ to each of us. That it fill us, it nourishes us, it renews us, it transforms us. That as we take in these elements... We are now in line with you, in line with all others in the community of the saints and are able then to take this with us out and share it to all others in making disciples wherever we go. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, the table is now set. Methodist Church, you do not have to be a member of this congregation or any congregation. All you have to be is have a willing and seeking heart, wanting the Lord to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins. So at this time, the table's open. We're going to do it as we have in the previous months. You'll come along this side and pick up the, the bread cup there, come to the middle. And then uh, we will uh, conclude with a prayer in our hymn. Please come. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat.
Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be reminded of the great cost you paid for us. 
Lord, help us never forget and always be grateful and share this hope and assurance with others because it is that hope and assurance that gets us through the dark times like these. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. We're closing our service today with Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. Maybe a slightly different version than you're uh, familiar with, although I think a lot of you have heard it before. And then we'll close with a benediction. Please rise if you're able. The words are on the screen. friends, the grace of God has freed you from the bondage of sin and death. The grace of God assures us that we can face the future with a certain hope of our resurrection to come. So as we grow in bearing spiritual fruit, may your grace, God, convince us in every situation to love others like we have never loved before. Amen. <laughs>